In this screencast, we're going to introduce the idea of block diagrams. So, in chemical engineering, you're probably familiar with the idea of a process flow diagram. In a process flow diagram, you might have a rectangle that might represent, say, a reactor or a mixing tank, some unit operation. And into that rectangle, you might have an arrow being drawn, and out of that rectangle, another arrow being drawn. Now these arrows in a process flow diagram represent the physical flow of material, probably a, a liquid solution flowing through a pipe into the reactor and another liquid solution flowing through a pipe coming out of the reactor. In process control, at least in block diagrams, that's not what we're interested in. What the arrows in block diagrams represent is the flow of information. And the rectangles don't represent, say, a unit operation like a reactor or a tank. They represent transfer functions, or sets of equations. So in general, the transfer function for any one of these blocks, let's say block i, is equal to the Laplace variable that represents the arrow coming out of that block, divided by the Laplace arrow, the Laplace variable that represents the arrow going into that block. So, for example, let's take a look at a, a transfer function, g1, which is between this arrow, which is represented by y1, and this other arrow, which is represented by y2. So the transfer function g1, which is represented by that particular block there, is equal to y2 of s divided by y1 of s. Similarly, if we look at this transfer function here, g2, which is represented by this block, then g2 of s is equal to the arrow coming out, which is y3 of s, divided by the arrow going in, y2 of s. So you can see this is the typical definition of a transfer function. It is the output divided by the input in the Laplace space. Now that I've defined these two transfer functions, g1 and g2, it's possible, using block diagram algebra, to determine what is the transfer function between y1 of s and y3 of s. So if we multiply these two transfer functions together, g1 and g2, then the intermediate y2 of s disappears. So g1 of s times g2 of s is equal to the first one, y2 of s divided by y1 of s, times the second one y3 of s divided by y2 of s. And you note here what happens is that the intermediate y2 cancels out. And what you get in the end is you get y3 of s divided by y1 of s. And so the transfer function that relates y3 to y1 is simply the product between the two transfer functions, g1 and g2. And in fact, this entire sequence of transfer functions can be represented in this way. So the, transfer the overall transfer function of this entire sequence being equal to g1 of s times g2 of s times g3 of s dot 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 all the way up to gn of s, all of the intermediates cancel out. And what you get in the end is your ultimate output, yn plus 1 of s, divided by your ultimate input, y1 of s, where yn of s is represented by this final arrow here. And y1 of s is represented by the first arrow in the sequence. So in this way, if you want to find the transfer function that relates the ultimate input to the ultimate output, all you have to do is multiply all the transfer functions in between. Similarly, if you want to relate, if you want to find the transfer function that relates any of the inputs to any of the outputs, just multiply all the transfer functions in between. So if you have a block diagram, you can immediately read from the block diagram any transfer function relating to any two particular inputs and outputs. Now, there are further algebraic relationships that could be represented on a block diagram. 
that you need to know about. So for example, there is a summation block. So the summation block, which is illustrated here on the left, you have the output of the summation block, which is y3 of s, is equal to the sum of the two inputs into that little symbol, the summation symbol, y1 of s plus y2 of s. So this particular symbol here, this is not a transfer function, because a transfer function relates in one input to one output, and it's the, it's the ratio of the output to the input. So this summation symbol here is not a transfer function. It is representing the addition of y1 and y2 equaling to y3. Similarly, of course, you could have a subtraction or a uh, comparator symbol here. And in this case, the output y3 of s is equal to y1 of s minus y2 of s, because there's a minus symbol here in that particular portion of the block. Finally, you might encounter a situation where you have an arrow that splits into two. Do not be fooled by this. So as chemical engineers, you have probably encountered pipes drawn on a process flow diagram that looks like this. And you note that this is a splitting point, in which case the composition of stream three is the same as the composition of stream two, is the same as a composition of stream one. That's not what's happening here. This is not a physical pipe that's splitting into two. It's not like you have one mass flow rate in stream one that gets split into two smaller mass flow rates in streams two and three. No, indeed, all three of these variables are equal to each other because this is the flow of information and information is not split into multiple parts. So whenever you have an arrow that splits into multiple parts that look like this, what it means is that all three of these Laplace variables are equal to each other. So you don't even have to label it as y1 of s, y2 of s, and y3 of s. They all could be labeled as y1 of s. Or more commonly, just one of them will be labeled. And so you might find that you don't see any of these other labels here. And you just have the first one being labeled.